Our next speaker used to be a pastor, and because he's here, uh, obviously he is an ex-pastor. Got it? <laughs> All right, and he, um, he has a popular YouTube channel. It is called The Virtual Deaf Church. Please give a warm welcome to Justin Volmar. Check one, check one. All right, thank you, Lauren. All right, hello, everybody out in the crowd. I'm really excited to be here today. And so, uh, a little bit clapping. I don't really hear it, but I do appreciate it. So thank you. Give me a little bit of energy here. All right. I'd really like to thank this conference committee for inviting me here t today. I feel truly honored to meet all of you in person. You know, I've been doing a lot of vlogging, um, a lot of work on the internet, looking at pictures, and it's really nice to put a name to the face and meet everybody here in person. And I'm really looking forward to a wild tonight at Skepta, a wild night tonight at Skepta Prom. I'd like to give a special thank you to uh, my brother and his girlfriend for coming all the way from Washington, D.C. to interpret for me today. I was a little bit nervous, but you know, I've known my brother my entire life, and I thank the committee for allowing him to come and interpret for me. And so, yeah, that's right, yeah, right, give him some applause. Our, how we applaud in the deaf world is like this. We wave our hands. So, Remember, um, if during my speech at any time it is maybe some stuttering or it's not accurate information, you know who to blame. Blame this guy. <laughs> However, if my speech is amazing, you know, you give me the credit, okay? I'll take the credit for that. And that's why you're here, Jared. All right. So I'd like to start with uh, explaining a little bit about my background. I was a preacher for 15 years, um, bathed in the blood of Christ, in your face, Baptist minister. Um, kind of that minister that you all hate to encounter, that you want to avoid. That was me. Um, I've been out of the closet, I guess you could call it, for a year or two now, maybe two years. And actually, when I came out as an atheist, I got a lot of national attention. I have gained some CNN. I was on CNN, and I had a lot of friends and family saying, you know, what's going on, Justin? What's wrong with you? Uh, what, what happened? And my answer was, you know, I've been studying theology for years, and just so many years, and so many books, and I gr ended up graduating with a master's degree in theology. And during my master's degree, I had this internal struggle, this and which led me to a conclusion that there is no God. And this is something that I was wrestling with for a long time. And I was having a really hard time dealing with it. And then I joined the clergy project. And the clergy project was something that helped me through this uh, uh, tough time. And so I made a vlog about it, about coming out of it as atheist, and wow, that really blew up in my face. I was the victim of a lot of Christian attacks. Um, I was called a liar. I was called Judas. Um, you know, there were so many um, barbs thrown my way. And I decided that I had to stand up and defy all of these people. And I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep my title of reverend. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you the real truth now. And that's actually driving the religious people crazy. And even though I've left the church, you know, the religion is going to continue to brainwash people and continue to teach their methods. So I'm here to stand up and expose the truth. So my, my speech today is called, Is Atheism a New Religion? And I have some vlogs about this as well. So I chose the word atheism. 
And I know some of you are out there thinking, you know, well, I'm not exactly an atheist. You know, maybe I'm just a skeptic. Maybe I'm a humanist. Uh, maybe I'm a secular, a free thinker. And that's fine. Whatever label you want to label yourself is fine, if you're religious or not religious. But I chose that word for a specific reason. Because we have theism versus atheism. And so that's why I, I choose this word and use it in my discussions. So an interesting thing that happens about, so when I say, are you, if I say agnostic, people kind of make a, you know, a little funny face, they curl their eyebrow. And if you say free thinker, they go, okay, um, free thinker, I'm not really sure what that means. And if I say humanist, you know, it's the same reaction. But once I say atheist, <laughs> you get a reaction. And you've seen that on people's faces as well, right? Hmm. And so that's why I choose to use that word atheist, because it always causes a lot of, <laughs> invokes a lot of, um, what is it? Reaction. reaction. So I'm not really here to discuss theism exactly, but I'm here to discuss the idea that is atheism a new religion? So one of the challenges I've experienced as coming out as an atheist, declaring that there is no God, people say, okay, but what's next? Well, there's no God. Yeah, I, I understand there's no God, but, but what's next? And, it, and I tried to figure out, you know, what is next? What are we supposed to be telling to people, to society, what are we supposed to be teaching to them? Because if I'm a, a theist, you know, I, figure, I focus on how religion is taught and how those ideas are shared. And if I'm an atheist, I don't know. If, if there is no God, then I guess I'll never see my family in heaven again. I'll never see my dogs and cats and things like that. So is that what atheism means? And so I'd, I'd like to have a new approach or a new view on atheism. And I'd like to emphasize that the time and age we're living in is an incredibly exciting, ex exciting and fast time. Things are changing at a neck breaking pace. There's so much technology happening. There's so many innovations that, are, that have been coming out. And it's just a, just a radical transformation to our society. It kind of started with factories and engines and the industrial revolution and you know which led to where we are today to the internet and from the internet it's going new and exciting places and so when you know when the industrial revolution happened factories were created machines were created and it's it sparked it sparked a change in society for a long time and then it's parallel to the internet today. For a long time, people didn't have access to education. And now with the internet, we have a lot of access to education. So we see how technology has improved society and life for people. So when cars were invented, you know, all of a sudden people were able to crisscross back and forth across the country. Before that, transportation was slow. It was horse and buggy. It took days to get everywhere. Now everything's happening in, in miles per hour. We have airplanes. The world has become much smaller and much more connected. And so we see how these technological advances have changed society. So during the time of the Industrial Revolution, when engines were created, a new philosophy was, had emerged at that time as well, Darwinism and Darwin. And Darwin's theory had a huge impact on the church. They started to question the creationism myth. And they said, well, maybe the story that we've got from, church, from the church isn't true. Darwin provided the theory of evolution. 
he said that we are actually evolving and that the creation myth isn't true. We started it as, from a small gene and we have evolved ever since. But before Darwin, people didn't know that. People weren't very educated and the only access they had to information was religion and was the church. They had the Bible and the Bible contained all the answers. With Darwin came out an explosion of information, an explosion of thoughts. And so these technical ideas and revolutions have led to a lot of changes in society. And so like the, teles the microscope, for example, was an incredible breakthrough in technology. We are able to access this microscopic world that we didn't know existed. We can now you know, study cells and things like that. But even with the invention of the microscope, we couldn't, still couldn't find God. You know, where was God? And the church said, well, no, no, God's not under the microscope. God's still up in the sky. So then we created a telescope, and we started to look through the heavens and to the stars, and we saw all the different planets and the entirety and the massiveness of the universe. And we said, okay, well, where is God? Because we should be able to see him. And the church said, well, you know, wait a minute. You guys don't understand God is invisible. <laughs> so, so then, you know, we invented some technology called the x-ray machine, maybe and the MRI, magnetic imaging, electromagnetic imaging. And, and so we found all of these, we created all of these technologies that have improved our lives and have made us ask the question again, okay, so where is God? And honestly, religion is reeling from all of these technological blows. All of the impacts that they've, they've received has really shaken their foundation and lost some of their control. As technology continues to improve and be invented, people are kind of waking up. And so when a new technology emerges, there's always an opportunity for a new social change or a new religion. And so when I say atheist, people think I'm saying God is dead. There is no God. And, you know, that's a valid point. But is that a religious statement? There is no God. A lot of people are leaving the church, leaving the church in groves, and once they leave the church, they're looking for something else. I mean, what's next? I left the church. What, what kind of evolution is going to occur in my, my thinking? And, you know, there are, words are very powerful, and so when you say, you know, the future will be bright, the future will be fantastic, When you tell them that technology is coming, that this technology will improve your life, it will improve things for the better, that the future is not empty and bleak, it's actually wonderful and it's limitless. And life is exciting. I mean, the future is, a, a, the future is bright. But religion says the future is the end. There is death and destruction. Millions of you will go to hell. And that's the theologist story, the theology that we've been told. So you actually have an opportunity to learn from religion, to kind of speak our new truth, to inform the world of what we really believe, that without religion, we still have hope, that the earth is an exciting place and that every human being has value and has a different perspective than you might have. And do you agree with me, guys? Yeah, all right, let's see some shaking hands. Okay, great. The fact is, a lot of people are changing their mind about religion. They're finding out that what they've been told about 
religion and history isn't true and that science is actually proving a lot of these myths otherwise. And people are waking up. People are realizing this. Light bulbs are going on and they're leaving the church. But they're kind of stuck. They're, they don't know where to go next. And so I'm thinking, instead of a church based on myth, I would like to have a church based on reason. I'd like a church based on science instead of fear and superstition. I'd like a community that's inclusive, that in involves everybody and is diverse instead of a rejecting exclusive community. And so right now we have this opportunity to create this new society, to create this new place. And this is a key part of my speech, is kind of connecting the old thoughts of religion to this new concept, this new idea or approach. We have a wonderful opportunity in the future to shape the future, to, can, to reshape the future, to create kind of a utopia of what we've always wanted the world to be. A social paradise of overcoming challenges and barriers and uplifting all of, all of society to a better future and to keep improving that. And those are some of the things that we can approach instead of being shackled with the weight of traditional religion. So as you think about the future, I like to take a look back at the past and kind of show us where we are and where we can be going in the future. Again, I'm a theologist, and hey, I love history, so. So I'm going to focus on three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And I've included three theology statements that pretty much encapsulate the value of the religion and summarizes a lot of their history into one statement. In Judaism, they said, O Israel, there is one Lord. And in Christianity, they said, Jesus is the Son of God. And in Islam, they said, there is no God, but one God. And so, what does an atheist say? What is the one theological statement you guys can kind of sum up our belief system with? Do you have a short theological statement that really has the same impact that shows where we're going, what we believe in, and what our organization is about or will look like? You guys, you follow me here? So I want you guys to think about that. Um, what kind of, what would you say, what would be our theological statement? Or are we kind of fixed on there is no God? Is that our theological statement? So when you look back at history, back during the Iron Age, it was actually a revolution of its own. Um, the, Invention and discovery of iron. Iron changed the way things were. Iron was stronger than wood. You could build stronger walls, stronger materials, stronger housing, things like that. It really changed how people lived. They were able to develop a plow and improve, your, improve farming. And out of this technolo technological development, humans boomed, populations grew. Before that, farming was more difficult. Maybe people were more migrant, but with the with the Iron Age came a techno technological development that led to a population boom. 
So city-states started to form into kingdoms, and people started to get confused because their local gods and their local cultural, their local cultures were being destroyed, being usurped, and being replaced. Like, for example, the king, Babylon, the king of Babylon, later took over Pr Persia, which became Greece, and they take over the culture and destroy all their old gods and Pathians. And during this time of a great growth and expansion, they thought, you know, here's a, time, here's a good time or a good place to set up a new religion. And so an evolution happened. Polytheism, polytheism changed to monotheism. And there's two um, pictures I've included here that are from the Bible. It's, and this is a picture of Elijah setting fire to the altar. And on the right we have Josiah destroying gods, statues of gods. And sad to say, sad to say religion, pe religious people are very violent. They don't give up that easily. And if they're threatened, they'll fight back, they'll bite, they'll punch and kick. And we've seen that throughout history time and time again. So Judaism started to become a religion. And when the when the technological revolution happened of the Iron Age, it led to J Judaism. And Judaism kind of filled in the void that was, that was produced by that technical, technological breakthrough. So in the beginning, I was talking about technology and how it changes things and how it now has led to a new religion, Judaism. So the Roman Empire had another revolution of its own. Um, the Romans built roads, the Romans connected cities. They took, all of, they took over the Mediterranean Sea and really improved trade. They built libraries, they built government buildings. And the Roman Empire was the most powerful empire in human history. And with that growth of technology, with that boom, humanity started to change and transform. And then Christianity appeared. With this change in, and then Christianity appeared. And Christians stood up and said to the Roman Empire, you are a false idol. I will worship Jesus over the Roman emperor. And Christians actually took over the Roman Empire And you can see how powerful religion becomes in this age of technological revolutions and, improve, and inventions. Um, unfortunately, Christians are a violent group as well. There was a lot of riots, a lot of mobs. Um, they destroyed a lot of temples, a lot of art. They destroyed a lot of history. And they kept their own... Ooh, okay. That's actually called a, a deaf... Death hazard. Sometimes I, sometimes I knock my glasses off, but I will not slap myself in the face. Okay. <laughs> so Christians took over; they gained power. And as you see, as a technical revolution happens, it transforms society. A technical revolution happens, and it leaves a void that religion has seemed to fill. And so there's a pattern starting to form here throughout history. And I know that Westerners, Americans, don't really know a lot about Islam. So I'll try to summarize this. And Islam in historical context, was, was the largest empire. They grew the fastest, they took over the most land. 
And you know how Christians brag about how great Europe was and everything in Rome, but the, the kingdoms of Islam were much, more, were much larger and more powerful. And this was called the Islamic Golden Age. This is actually happening at the same time that the Europe had plunged into the Dark Ages. So Islam really inherited a lot of the Roman ideas, a lot of their science, math, philosophy, and information. And they, they inherited that and built on it. There was a lot of scientific breakthroughs from Islam, um, a lot of astronomy and, and technological breakthroughs. And again, it was a revolution that happened that caused the Islamic golden age to prosper. This transformed the Arabian Peninsula. It, it changed how people live their lives. It changed what they believe. And Muslims were, tr were taking over and killing and wiping out different religions and different things like that, but they took over power. So you see a pattern happening here throughout history. So coming back to where we are today and the future of atheism. And so I'm trying to connect these three, these topics. Is atheism a new religion? When I came out as an atheist, I had a lot of friends without any religious affiliation. They you know, didn't really believe in God one way or the other. They just weren't really involved. And they were like, you know that weird religion thing you're involved in um, that's kind of awkward, I don't really want to talk about it. I said, well, no, I'm not religious. I'm not religious anymore. And so I came with this new idea, this new radical approach, almost like a, someone, a Jew, a Christian, or a Muslim, I came up with this new idea and challenged the old traditional thinking. I said, there is no God. And these old traditional religions know the threat and they know the threat of technology and how fast things change and how atheism is a threat to their fundamental thinking. And fundamental Christians are fighting. They're declaring a war on Christianity. They're declaring a spiritual war. They call us the devil and they're beating the drum to march the troops. And they, they are, they're proclaiming that Jesus is coming. The day of revelation is coming. They're, they're turning it up. You know, like for example, what the hell is going on with the red Starbucks cup thing? I mean, <laughs> so religion is starting to feel threatened. They know it. They know that something's happening, that something is coming just on the horizon. And they feel a lot of their members leaving. That's why they're fighting even harder. That's why religion wants to teach creationism in school. That's why they want to include prayer into school. And their lives and their future depends on how we react to our, new, to our future. So there's a pattern here. With a technical revolution, society changes and a void is created. People start to analyze what they believe in, what they know to be true, and right now we have this void, this opportunity to be filled. And honestly, it's kind of a race right now between several different religions. And they're trying to figure out whoever can adapt the best to 
current technology or modern times will win. So this is a key slide in my speech. This is important. I need a lot of people in this revolution. I need artists, I need poets, I need teachers, I need doctors, I need lawyers. We need judges, politicians, mathematicians, scientists. I need all of these people to stand up and declare a different way of life, a different way of living, a different belief system, a different future. And that's something that atheists are good at. We're good at debating and fighting the system. So the question is, what's next? And the truth is we have a lot to offer. We, have, we get to reestablish a new philosophy with new ideas with new values, including all of society, and shifting what has been or the status quo into a new space and place. It, atheism shouldn't just be about fighting religion and theology. It should be about how we can improve the world, how we can make it a better place with our innovation and with our thoughts. Give my brother a few minutes of a break. He's needs a breath. So I'd like to share a little bit about my personal story, because um, I shared some abstract ideas about religion, theology, and I wanted to share a little bit about myself. And so when I think about what's next, that's a question that I ask myself. You know, what am I going to do next? So I've already stood up, declared that there is no God. I am atheist. I've blown people away with that. I've made that impact. And what's next? That's what I keep thinking about, you know, what, what's next? So I guess I'd share a little bit about my, my personal story and what's happened over the last couple of years and how I've kind of changed my perspective on life. So I make vlogs. And when I did the I Have Become an Atheist vlog, it blew up, it got some national attention. I was on CNN and I was in a few articles. And it was cool, you know, I, it felt kind of cool. It, it felt really cool the first time I tried to Google myself and Google filled in the, the name for me. I got J-U-S-T-I-N-V-O-L, and boom, my name appeared without my own typing. And I'm hoping someday I'm going to beat that Justin Bieber guy. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a new haircut. I wanted to give you some examples of some good work that the Clergy Project has done. I don't know if you know about this organization, but it's an incredible organization that gives people who are kind of stuck in religion a way out, a way to escape, um, to deconvert as a pastor was incredibly difficult for me. Um, it was such an emotional hardship. I felt like I was all alone. You know, I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody from the church, for sure. I couldn't tell anybody there that, you know, I'm doubting the existence of God. 
And so it was a secret. It was something that I had to keep inside. I mean, I couldn't even discuss it with my fellow pastors. The threat of shaming, the fear associated with that, and you know, it's true, it, it really happened. My 15 years of work in religion, all of that was thrown away, destroyed. I mean, the Christians came with the guns ablazing and really just burned down, well, it was, it burned down all my work that had been done in the last 15 years. And so if I'm experiencing that fear, those threats, and those types of things. What is it like for all of the other pastors or priests out there that are questioning this? I mean, a priest is a human being as well, you know? And, and the response that the church always gives you is, just pray about it. And so we need to have a safe haven for pastors or priests to discuss these things and get out of the church. I mean, there's always hope. Just look at me, you know. And that pastor, that, that in-your-face pastor that you hated the most, you know, there's hope for him too. That's who I used to be. And so when I came out as an atheist, I felt a lot of dread, a lot of guilt and anger. I had one semester left in my seminary studies, and so I just had to get through this last course, and I said, yes, God is real, he's the highest power. And inside, I didn't believe that anymore, but I, I just knew I had this, la I just had to put on a facade, this mask for this last class, make it through, type my research paper, yes, God is real, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And it was difficult, I was, it was really difficult. And I wasn't even sure if I was gonna, get a, it was gonna graduate. I was like, I don't trust these damn Christians. I don't know if they'll give me my degree. I did get it. And as soon as I got my degree, I made the announcement. I said, I just hit the button and said, go. Just, I launched it. And I felt this wave of emotion and relief And some wonderful things happened. And they said, wait, you're an atheist? Wait, I'm an atheist too. No, no, I, I don't believe in God. And they kept, and they kind of kept coming out of the woodwork. They said, I've been doubting the existence of God and I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm glad that there's someone here who's saying what I'm thinking. And so it was so strange to have this life blow up in my face and just burn away and then when I turned around to the atheist community have a new life and new opportunities. And so I started a new group called the Deaf Free Thinkers, you can see on the board. Uh, do you guys like that? Let me give me a little, a little cheer. All right, thank you. All right. And I found that these that this group kind of empowered people to come out, that it articulated a lot of the thoughts that people were having. And this is a project that maybe a lot of you know about. It's called Recovering from Religion. It's another great organization that helps people who are unsure or want to come out as atheists, they have a hotline and they answer a lot of questions and provide a safe space to discuss these things. And we all know that these types, types of discussions aren't allowed in the church. Any kind of doubt is you're immediately exiled. Not exiled, excuse me, kicked out of church, interpreter, correction. And I mean, the Bible school and Bible study is, is not a place for discussion, it's really a place for brainwashing. So I think the internet 
is this technological revolution that's happened for us modernly in the modern day. I mean, we have a place where information can be shared on such, at such a fast level. People are given access to a lot more information. And that, that internet revolution has, has changed how people access information. Before, uh, before every, information was limited, it was taught to us by teachers, maybe we could read a book, but with the internet, we have all the information we could ever have at our fingertips. And so now, I'm an atheist, and I have 15 years of, seminary, of theology experience. I have a lot of knowledge about the Bible. I mean, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? And I thought, you know, I should continue to teach. I actually want to re-engage with Christians. I don't want to preach to the choir. I mean, you guys don't believe in God. I get it. You agree with me. Right. There's no God. You know it. I know it. We agree. Great. But I really want to have dialogues. I want a more challenging experience than that. In the beginning, I felt oppressed <laughs> by religion. I said, fuck you, religion. You know, just, just F everybody off. I don't care. It was a lot of emotion inside, and I was going a little bit crazy. You know, I was... It was kind of a phase I went through. And then I calmed down a little, and I realized that if I react like that, that the religious people aren't gonna listen. They're not gonna engage in a dialogue or debate. And the atheists were like, yeah, fuck religion, keep saying that, that's great. <laughs> and I was like, huh, well, that's not exactly what I want. You know, I was stuck in that religious world with everyone who believed in religion, and now I'm kind of stuck in this atheist world where everyone believes the same thing. So how do I re-engage with that Christian community to open up dialogue? And so I try to change my tone, and I call myself now the friendly atheist. <laughs> kind of like Casper the friendly ghost. So I'm a friendly atheist. Hey, how are you? Would you like to talk about religion? On my vlog, I do try to keep a smile with a little bit of a barb though, just to, uh, and maybe like an offensive title to uh, draw people in. <laughs> like one of the titles I used recently was, Is Jesus a Black Man? <laughs> another one was, Did Jesus Have a Wife? Mm -hmm. uh, another title was, Why Does God Hate Sex? So these are titles that kind of set Christians on fire, really upset them and engage them in the discussion. And then when I appear on video, I have a smile, I'm presenting a thoughtful argument. And that's kind of the work that I've been doing for the last few years. So I use theology, I use scripture, history, science, philosophy, I pull from all of these schools of thought and bring that to the discussion. And a lot of times the reaction I get is they say, well, he's, he's the devil. That's what's happening. But it's hard to call me a devil when I smile, I'm very calm, I don't blow up and react, and I act rationally. You guys like that idea? Yeah? Good stuff? All right. This is another personal story um, that happened that really kind of threw me in a new direction, started me on a new journey. And you know how you guys think about the future, what you're going to do, how you're going to approach life. kind of reframe your world now. And that actually happened to me recently. My daughter was born deaf and blind. Oh, it's, I, you guys, I know the initial reaction is, oh my God, that's, I'm so sorry, but it's okay. I wanted to bring this to the world much like my atheism. 
I want to say, it's okay that she's deaf and blind. You know, I want to reframe this, that it's, it's not like, oh, that poor, that poor, poor little girl. It's like, no, she's a person and she has abilities. And this has caused an explosion on Facebook. This has really been something that has been catching on. Every post or every vlog I make gets about five or 6,000 views. And this is my daughter right here. Okay, we'll applaud for that. And I'm hoping to inspire some parents out there, grandparents, that maybe when you, when someone has a disabled child and everyone thinks, oh, that's so awful, and Christians say, well, that's God punishing you, you know, that's not true. And it's okay to have a disabled child. They're going to survive, they're going to grow, they're going to thrive. All right. And so as I make this new vlog and blog post, I'm getting a lot of Christians saying, wow, you're so inspiring. God bless you. <laughs> Things like that. And I'm actually getting a lot of these Christians back into my viewership. And I'm thinking, God bless me. Don't you guys know what's, what my beliefs are? I mean, everybody knows that I'm an atheist. But I look at this as a good, good opportunity to show that, yes, I am an atheist, but I'm also a good parent. That atheists can be good, moral people. It kind of counters the religious brainwashing. I mean, I'm supposed to be this immoral, not, um, no God having evil person, and now I have a, a different image that I'm showing them. That's why I say we need scientists, engineers, teachers, poets, parents even. I want you to, in your own lives, whatever you want to label yourself, agnostic, free thinker, atheist, whatever it is, but I want you to stand up and proclaim your belief and tell people what you believe in. And I leave you with a question, a challenge, is what is next? What is the positive impact you can make on this earth? What's the positive transformation that you can create? How can you inspire others? Beyond the limited religious viewpoint, we have this exciting new future ahead of us, and how are you going to change it? All right, thank you very much, and thank you to my brother for interpreting.